thank you very much for inviting me. Um, artificial intelligence is, of course, mostly automating data processing. And uh, in current moment, uh, it's mostly machine learning, mostly uh, deep learning, and uh, it's very successful. But it always has been a philosophical project as well. And this philosophical project was always a tiny fraction of what happened in practice. But when uh, Minsky and McCarthy and others started the field, they saw themselves in the tradition of the philosophical question. And this philosophical question is how can we actualize the mind? Is how to map it into uh, the world in which we exist? How can we understand how it's implemented in reality? And uh, our own patcher seems to have a problem there. And this is uh, often called this hard problem of how to relate mind and reality with each other. And what I find fascinating is that a lot of other patches don't seem to have that problem in the same way. It's this problem that might have to do specifically with our own metaphysics, with our own way to uh, see structure the basic reality and how we make sense of it. And because we don't have a meta-metaphysics that allows us to conceptualize our own metaphysics and the metaphysics of other cultures and contexts, we have difficulty to debug that and also to translate contexts between different cultures. And I noticed this one day when somebody tried to explain animism to me, and I said to him, Japanese uh, mythology believes that everything in the universe is alive and conscious. And I said, this cannot be. We're pretty sure that Japanese people have noticed that when you hit the person on the head, the person can become unconscious. When you hit harder, the person can even die. And they will not say that everything in the universe is alive and conscious except an unconscious person or a dead person. Right? So this word means something different from what you make it out to be. You're mistranslating it into your old metaphysics, but the referent is something different. And so we need to look back uh, from first principles in this culture. What are these concepts that are being used to make sense of reality? And so what I find is that psychology is not um, building systemic theories for methodological reasons. And neuroscience is committed to focusing on the shenanigans of a single cell type only. And uh, the AI is mostly focusing on statistical learning algorithm. And philosophy has lost the plot in some sense in the 1920s. And what is the plot? Basically, it's this naturalization of the mind is the greatest philosophical project. And if we succeed to it, then it, by mechanizing the mind, by building a system that works mind-like, it's also the last human philosophical project, because from then on, philosophy will mostly be done by machines that are no longer human, or by systems that are no longer human. And this project was in many ways started by Aristotle. And in earnest, it was pursued by Leibniz, who basically had this insight that we need to mathematize the light and translate it into some kind of mathematical machine. And uh, this was then taken on by people like Frege, who built a calculus in which he uh, hoped to be able to express thoughts, and Tarski, who uh, made a, a progress in fixing the issues with logic that Aristotle uh, didn't see yet. And uh, Wittgenstein would try to basically to turn English into a programming language so we could do philosophy in a formal language. Failed doing this for the same reasons as Minsky did 30 years later. But uh, Wittgenstein, in some sense, preempted Minsky's logicist program for AI. And uh, I think he led, this led to devastation in philosophy because most people in philosophy did not think in terms of programming. Wittgenstein already knew that you can re uh, play, um, represent all logic using NAND gates. And uh, so in some sense, he could already see Turing universality. Turing was his pupil. But he didn't see the need to prove it yet and discuss it. Uh, and this is a stream of thought that philosophy had really picked up on. Philosophy mostly didn't understand the significance of the greatest insights of the last century. And I think the biggest uh, philosophical insights of the last century was, first of all, this discovery of Riddle. You cannot build a mathematical machine that is able to run the semantics of classical mathematics without breaking. And this was this uh, thing that shocked him very much, that you cannot build stateless mathematics. If you have the stateless nature of mathematics, in which you are able to describe infinities and continua, which is a benefit of having stateless mathematics, um, that doesn't, doesn't work step by step, um, then um, you lose a lot of the description of reality that physicists and mathematicians hope to have. And uh, instead, you are forced to use different languages. And the languages that you can use that don't lead into these contradictions that Gödel discovered to be inevitable are computational languages. Your uh, CPU in your computer is never going to be in an illegal state. It's never going to break, right? It's just going to from step to step to step. 
just the question is, what does this represent? What this thing is doing is a different one than what you might want to express in your logical language. So you can say things in a classical language that cannot be translated into computer code because they will not lead to a running program. And uh, this means that your semantics are wrong. The semantics of the computer are never wrong, or the semantics of your brain are never wrong. Your brain just goes into the next state, and what it represents and so on is just the functional representation of how these um, the manipulations are happening in the system. Um, the second uh, big insights are related to the nature of computation itself, so the practical ways of performing computations. We've uh, discovered a, a different ways of formalizing computation, and basically uh, in this way, language itself, because we now realize that all representations are built over automata languages. And but then uh, we had information theory and learning, basically how we can express things, how we can build systems that make models of reality, the nature of a model itself, theory of modeling, and uh, the idea of functional approximations. Deep learning, in some sense, has been invented uh, multiple times. And one of the first ones was uh, Alexander Ivanenko, but uh, Alexei Ivanenko, but you know that things are being named after the person who last discovered it. So a lot of things in deep learning are last discovered by people like uh, Jeffrey Hinton and Jan de Kuhn, but there are many, many before that who already discovered them. And um, I think uh, the other big uh, discovery on the philosophical side is universality, which means all these computational systems have the same power until there are not a resources. And so under the assumption that your computer has unlimited memory and you have unlimited time to wait until it is done, all the computers can do the same stuff. Of course, this is an assumption that is not true in reality. In reality, the systems that you implement have different powers, it's so they can solve different problems. But very often, there is a way to compile between those solutions. But uh, this is a very nice result because it means it doesn't really matter which computational language you are using to describe reality. You just use the best one for the problem. The power is going to be the same. So uh, this leads us to a position that I would call strong computationalism. And strong computationalism basically is this idea that we can describe uh, representational systems um, from within using um, automata and that Every implementable language is, uh, has to rest on automata, and no implementable language can do more than a finite automaton. And this means that hypercomputational objects cannot exist because you cannot refer to them, you cannot talk about them, you cannot uh, observe them, you cannot conceptualize them. Only things that uh, are computable, in a sense, are things that you can refer to in any kind of language. And so all realizable systems can be described using non-deterministic or stochastic Turing machines. But is this also true for consciousness?